That's the purpose of this, educating people, getting people to care, and then... This is Dr. Jessica Hua. She gave a lecture on this channel about a paper that she wrote called Evolved Pesticide Tolerance Influences Susceptibility to Parasites in Amphibians. This paper was a follow-up to an earlier paper, which we made a video about, which documents how wood frogs will respond differently to pesticide exposure depending on their population's proximity to agriculture. This is fairly straightforward. You can take populations along a distance from agriculture gradient. Those far from agriculture are not exposed to pesticides as often compared to those close to agriculture. What the paper found is that populations living close to agriculture have higher baseline tolerance compared to populations living far from agriculture, and further that the degree of plasticity in pesticide response varied along an agricultural gradient. So a frog which came from close to agriculture would show a high innate tolerance to pesticide, but that tolerance would not change very much, no matter what it was exposed to over its lifetime. In contrast, a frog which came from distant to agriculture would show a lower innate tolerance, but would show much greater plastic ability to develop tolerance over its lifetime if it were exposed to pesticides at low levels. So that was what the earlier paper showed. Some frogs had high tolerance, but low plasticity. Other frogs were less tolerant, but had high plasticity. And then what this later paper tried to do is show how these patterns of tolerance and plasticity play into larger patterns of wood frog ecology. See, pesticides are not the only thing which threatens wood frogs. Specifically, there are two parasites, a trematode and a ranavirus, which might interact with the pesticide response in unusual ways. Maybe innate pesticide resistance also makes the frogs more resistant to parasite infection, or maybe developing pesticide resistance is so energy intensive that the frogs don't have energy left to fight the parasites. Maybe it depends on which kind of parasite they're talking about. It turns out ecology is complicated. So here's what they did. We went out to 15 populations of wood frogs, collected egg masses, brought them back to the lab, reared them in common conditions until they became tadpoles. They gathered frogs from those 15 populations because their previous research had shown that those populations vary both in their proximity to agriculture and in their pesticide response in predictable ways. Then they exposed those 15 populations to parasites to see if their parasite response was in any way connected to their pesticide response. She exposed them to either zero or 50 trematodes. She also exposed them to zero or 10 to the third plaque forming units of ranavirus. And the results they got were complicated. For trematodes, pesticide tolerance and parasite tolerance were correlated. Those that are pesticide tolerant also had the lowest trematode load. But for ranavirus, it was the opposite. Those tadpoles from populations that are pesticide tolerant also had higher viral loads. So how do we make sense of these diverging results? Well, the next step is to look at the wider ecology. See, wood frogs and ranavirus and trematodes are not the only creatures in this system. There are also snails. We think that one explanation for this is that those that were pesticide tolerant are from populations that are close to agriculture, which also experience a lot of nutrient input which facilitate the snail. The snail is the first host of the parasite. So when you have more snails, you have more parasites. So it's possible that those that are tolerant to pesticides have also evolved tolerance to parasites because they're are likely exposed to them more. So this would require another experiment, but her guess is that trematode exposure varies with agricultural proximity, while ranavirus exposure doesn't because trematodes co-vary with snails, and snails are associated with agriculture. If this is true, it means that pesticide exposure does make frogs more susceptible to parasites, but only the types of parasites whose population size isn't directly related to pesticide use. There are so many contingencies in this system. Proximity to agriculture not only affects wood frogs, it also affects snails, which in turn affects the kind of parasites that are exposed to both. With so many variables mixed together, it's very difficult to predict how a change in one will impact all the rest. Rather than view these interactions as just hopelessly complex, I think that investigating these contingencies is the best way for us to understand just how interconnected the living world is. It often feels like the closer that you look at something, the more complicated it gets, and the less that you know. But with each of these studies about a plastic response here, a pesticide interaction there, the story that we can tell about the system as a whole becomes just a little bit richer, and our place within it becomes, maybe, just a little bit more clear. We're only just beginning. But I think what we stand is we need more people to do these types of studies. 
and make these efforts so that we can get there. Welcome to the end screen. This video is part of a class called the Evo Seminar Series. We host speakers who give in-depth talks about biology and then make videos that try to connect that biology to you. There's a link to Jessica's paper in the description below and you can click there to watch Jessica's full talk or click there to subscribe and watch more videos like this one. Thanks very much. Goodbye!